I make movies. What's up, guys? Today, we will be flipping through The Amazing Spider-Man number 51 from August of 1967, written by Stan Lee, with art by John Romita, inks by Mickey DeMio, and lettered by Sam Rosen. And this is the second appearance of the Kingpin. First Kingpin cover, but this is also the first appearance of Robbie Robertson, who works at the Daily Bugle and is basically J. Jonah Jameson's uh, right hand man and the big editor at the Daily Bugle. So let's go ahead and flip through in the clutches of the kingpin you can tell this cover is pretty beat up we've got a lot of spine damage there got a nice crease there there's a crease there a little chip there chip fold a lot of damage up there some water damage there that we'll find out uh we'll see later on in the issue Also, there's a lot of yellowing right here in this inside cover, if you see that, on this beautiful ad page. Great first page by Ramita and, and uh, Demio. I really hope I'm saying his name right. This is my second copy of this book. My first copy actually is just is a coverless copy. So I've got an issue of this in my collection where it's just this. This is how it is. Again, this is the, the uh, Kingpin's second appearance. likes to do that. And this issue takes place right after the famous Amazing Spider-Man number 50 with the uh, famous storyline Spider-Man No More. And that features art that was uh, Translated into one of the Spider-Man films. I think it was the second one. But it's one of those images that gets used a lot when recapping Spider-Man or wanting to talk about Spider-Man. Great panels here. Nice full page ad for Not Brand X number one. Marvel's little humor book at the time. Great little sound effect there. Room! Spider-Man and then on this page we're shown uh, Frederick Boswell who is also known as Big Man He's a crime boss as well also works for the Daily Bugle and is a uh, very close to J. Jonah Jameson so he leads a secret life Let's go back to that other page here. 
Kingpin's wearing a jacket. Here we can see he's probably taking his jacket off. Yep, takes the jacket off. Beautiful orange vest. Gets into a fight with, uh, I believe he said his name was Big Turk? Or is it just Turk? It's Big Turk. He's overpowered by the Kingpin. Great character. Definitely uh, somebody you don't want to mess with. Very deceiving in terms of images and his appearance. And also, let's go back a couple pages, but uh, here we can start to see the beginnings of the water damage on this book that we can see very clearly on the cover. Pages are newest print. So these do absorb water. And it's not, uh, it's not a good day when that happens. Wilson and Frederick. And then on this page, we've got J. Jonah Jameson and the introduction of Robbie Robertson. Here we've got Ned Leeds, Betty Brandt, Peter Parker. Jump ahead to the next page. Spider-Man's infamous uh, moped. Motorcycle, whatever it is. I believe it's a moped. Because, you know, Spider-Man can't afford a real motorcycle. But I believe those were what motorcycles looked like back in the 60s. I don't know. I wasn't alive. Mary Jane Watson, Gwen Stacy, Harry Osborne. So within these pages, we've got a bunch of people that are essential to Spider-Man's mythology. Great two pages of action and storytelling. Whole bunch of sound effects here we've got. Just a bunch of them. It's beautiful. Beautiful lettering. Several great shots of Spider-Man in action. Spider-Man reaching for his spider tracer, throws it on to... Again, is that Big Turk again? I'm not familiar with him. Also, here we've got more of the water damage. We're at the middle of the... Middle of the book. You can see one of these staples is exactly in the fold. The other one is slightly off. advertisement for government surplus stuff have you ever been to a surplus store I think they're fun stores to go into I remember the first time I ever, ever went into a uh, army surplus store and saw everything and just thought it was the one of the coolest stores I've ever been into Here we've got Kingpin's goons going after J. Jonah Jameson because Jameson's about to crack the case on the Kingpin and his wave of crime and Kingpin's got to put a stop to him. So classic traditional mob stuff. Let's blindfold him, hold a gun to him, put him in the back seat and take him to our boss where he meets his fate. Jameson knows Foswell's there. Great shot there with the Kingpin. Got some Spider-Man butt. Got this, the famous Spider-Man spotlight. It's 
Spider-Man uh, projects off of his belt. Spider-Man webs up his goons. We've got a full page of stuff to buy for cheap, for kids, shot by mail. Again, more water markings. Another page of ads where you can buy a darling pet monkey for $18.95. I wonder how that would have worked back in the day. And I'm also afraid to even even know how that would have worked. It does not sound very humane. Great shot of the Kingpin in action going against Spider-Man. Great shot of Spider-Man right there. Spider-Man gets a hold of King Pin's little gimmick cane, breaks it. And again, another gimmick of the King Pins. Shooting a gas of some sort into Spider-Man's face to knock him out. Look at that gas shooting out from his tie pin. Even your spider strength can't save you now. Kingpin, Wilson Fisk, we all know, later becomes a Daredevil villain, but he is a villain within the Spider-Man and Daredevil books. He was a favorite character of one of my high school teachers, so much that uh, that teacher asked me to draw a picture of him that I wound up getting uh, some credit Great shots here of Spider-Man passing out. Nice little worm's eye view. And Jameson, Spider-Man beaten. It's what I've always wanted, but not now. Not like this. Another advertisement. Then we jump into the letters page. More Marvel advertisements. Got an ad for the Marvel superhero t-shirts with the Fantastic Four, Doctor Strange, the Hulk, Thor, the Avengers, Spider-Man, Iron Man, there's also sweatshirts with The Thing and The Hulk, Marvel Stationery Kit, full color 12 by 16 inch posters, and what are these? More full color posters, one dollar each. These look to be buttons. Also going back, stand soapbox. Let's take a look at the uh, Mighty Marvel checklist. What was coming out? Fantastic Four number 65. X-Men number 34. Thor 142. Tales of Suspense 92. Looks like Tales to Astonish, number 94, Sergeant Fury, number 44, Sergeant, is that, yeah, Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos, Marvel Collector's Item Classic, Classics, number 10, Fantasy Masterpieces, number 9, Marvel Tales, number 9, and then let's see, let's go back one more page. Nope. But right here, we've got, let's meet 25 more, uh, what was this? The MMMS, that was the Mighty Marvel Marching Society members. 
So here we've got a bunch of people. That'd be funny if going through there if I found somebody that I knew. And we go to the mailbag. Yes, the Mary Marvel Marching Society. I believe that's what I said. Craven the Hunter. And then the very last page, more ads. Let's take a look at that spine. Look at that. Eesh. There you can see the water damage some more. And the famous back cover with this Norman Rockwell ad that we always see on some of these older books. So there you go. The Amazing Spider-Man number 51 from 1967. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. Uh, make sure you're still subscribed. If you're not, please subscribe if you'd like to. Uh, do you think I should do a Patreon? I don't know. If I do, it's only going to be a dollar. So thank you for watching this video, and until next time.